being underway. A very good morning to you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, very special welcome to all of you. Thank you for taking the time out of your very uh, busy schedules. But uh, when we talk about safety and health in the mining sector, this is an issue which requires our 100% attention. So uh, thank you for joining us. And in particular, uh, thank you very much uh, to the Chief Inspector, Mr. David M. Caesar, uh, who has fastidiously um, contributed uh, to improving safety and health in the mining sector and joined us for all our five uh, safety and health mining days from the Minerals Council perspective. And to all our leaders from organized labor, um, our partners, not, not our colleagues, our partners in this particular process, our Mineral Council office bearers, board members, and CEOs, uh, representatives of um, companies and organizations that help in our drive towards improving safety and health in the sector, uh, members of the media, uh, Minerals Council colleagues, and other guests, um, a very warm welcome to you this morning. I welcome you to this fifth annual National Day of Health and Safety in Mining. This is an annual day of recommitment, which reinforces our Kumbali Kaya health and safety strategy, which we initiated back in 2019. Um, and just to make the comment, even though it is a one day event, it is all about uh, highlighting what we do for the remaining 364 days of the year uh, in our processes around improving health and safety in the mining sector. The purpose of this national commemorative event is to remind us all, including the leadership of our industry, that the safety and health of mining employees is our primary concern. Kumbhali Kaya tells us uh, that our focus must be on zero harm, ensuring that every one of us returns home as healthy, healthily and as safely as when we left home. And it reminds us when we have failed to mourn those who were lost. Please may we observe a moment's silence and contemplate our colleagues who have not returned home to their families and friends and that's not only from the safety side, but also from the challenges that uh, we've had from a COVID perspective and those of our colleagues who have suffered from COVID. So just a minute silence, please. Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. May their souls rest in peace. As an industry, when stakeholders assess our performance, we must understand and accept the extent to which we have met our goal of zero harm is only uh, the only measure of our performance. And while we have made steady progress towards our goal of zero fatalities, achieving the lowest level of fatalities in 2019, we have had regrettably and unfortunately, two successive years of unacceptable and deeply disappointing years of regression in our safety performance, which prompted an urgent response from the Minerals Council Board uh, and from our engagements with um, the DMRE and our organized labor partners uh, in this particular process, where we basically, um, in our board meeting in December, agreed to uh, implement eight critical interventions to, in particular, uh, um, reduce the um, uh, regression fatalities that we were experiencing at that time. Ladies and gentlemen, we cannot use COVID-19 and its associated disruptions to operate particularly at different levels, for example, at the supervisory level, as an excuse. We must not underestimate, uh, but at the same time, we must not underestimate the damaging consequences of a pandemic on our safety performance. Last year, we lost 74 of our colleagues um, compared to 60 of our colleagues that passed away in 2020 versus the 51 fatalities that we had in 2019. The urgent interventions uh, from the Minerals Council side, particularly after our December special board meeting, were designed to immediately halt the regression and then reverse the trend. It's far too early to say that we are successful, but we have seen some um, welcome uh, progress areas uh, so far this year. 
So far, we've seen an improvement in 2022 in our safety performance with progress in areas like uh, falls of ground and tractors and mobile machinery. But overall, we are still nowhere near the levels of safety that we want to see in the sector. We have a long way to go and we have a lot more work to do to achieve our goal of zero harm. Uh, Mr. Tim Imponazi, uh, the chair of the Minerals Council CEO Zero Harm Forum, will address the work that we are doing to improve safety and some of the health aspects. Uh, and we also will uh, get some additional inputs from both myself and Timber on some of the other related health related issues that we that we're focusing on. And then we'll have some concluding comments once we've had some uh, inputs from our partners in this journey uh, from the Minerals Council President, Ms. Nalita Fakori, who's going to summarize some of the key points and takeaways and make some concluding remarks. With your indulgence, I'd like to focus uh, for a few minutes on COVID-19, which has been devastating um, for our country um, and for to a certain extent for our industry, but also for the world. And as we return back to our pre-COVID lives, we need to realize that COVID hasn't gone away and there will be future uh, variants that we need to manage uh, as we go forward, a bit like treating it like flu uh, epidemics when those do arise. And there are many people in our industry and in our country that are still suffering the effects of, uh, from a longer term perspective of contracting COVID, uh, especially when they weren't vaccinated. So I think we must continue to vaccinate against the disease to protect ourselves, our family, our friends, and our colleagues. And I'd like to make the point that uh, the mining sector through the Minerals Council, working very closely with our trade union partners, uh, with the Department of Health, and with our government partner in the form of the DMRE, uh, can be proud of what we've achieved so far in managing COVID-19, the way that we were able to get back to work uh, quickly, the way that we were able to get our vaccination rates and just to say that three quarters, 76% uh, of, um, of our workforce um, have been at least vaccinated once. 67% have, uh, have been fully vaccinated. And this compares to their nationwide vaccination rate of less than 45% for first jabs only. So ladies and gentlemen, we need to maintain our intensity, improve our mining percentage, and ensure that all vaccinated employees also receive their booster shots, uh, shots in good time. When we consider the theme for this year's commemoration of health and safety in mining, we recognize that notwithstanding the fact that the industry has risen to the cha challenge of combating the pandemic, that we did lose 750 of our colleagues uh, to the disease. What I can report is that our fatality rate from uh, employees in the mining sector that contracted COVID was 1.18%, and that compares to a national fatality rate of 2.6%, and that excludes unusual deaths. So I think as an industry, in partnership with organized labor and government, we have managed this pandemic exceptionally well uh, from an industry level perspective. Um, in identifying stepping up to the challenge as this year's theme, we recognize the progress made on many fronts in respect of health and safety, but the challenges still remain and that we need, we can only address these issues by working closely with our partners in the DMRE and organized labor as we've done to combat the whole COVID-19 pandemic. There are many examples of excellence in our industry, demonstrating our members are stepping up to the challenge, but working in partnership with our partners in this process. And we'll th uh, highlight three examples uh, of this particular progress. You'll see brief videos highlighting successes in our health and safety initiatives. Uh, the first one will be a video uh, focused on addressing vaccine hesitancy which was and which remains a national and global challenge. And the Minerals Council has played a important role in understanding the science and developing a toolbox to overcome hesitance. Uh, and we have uh, an example here from uh, Kumba Iron Ore, part of the Anglo-American group where this effort was tackled at operations by peer educators who helped convince and support their colleagues in adopting vaccinations. We'll hear about this in our first video. In our second video, um, We'll hear some excellent uh, leading work that's being done about the industry's approach to no noise management and how we've made uh, good progress in stepping up to the challenges of reducing noise levels um, and protecting the hearing of employees. And then our third um, short video, we'll hear from our colleagues at Northam's Eland Mine, how they're addressing uh, falls of ground by improving underground lighting 
um, and particularly in, in sloping working areas. Then Timber will speak more about the progress the industry has made in addressing uh, various other challenges around falls of ground and uh, particularly the historical performance in deep level platinum and gold, which he'll refer to a bit later. Um, ultimately, all of this is about hashtag making mining matter and working with our partners on uh, taking this particular process forward. Before I'd like to, um, before I get into the details of the program, I'd like to thank all of our, our partners um, for being here today. Uh, in respect of health and safety, we have one common goal, which is zero harm. There's no competition between companies or between our uh, key social partners in this particular journey. And today is an excellent example of this, uh, particularly with a large number of people that have turned out for this particular event. It therefore gives me um, a great pleasure and it's indeed a privilege, um, and I must commend him for the work that he has done over the years to in, um, introduce uh, Mr. David M. Caesar, uh, the Chief Inspector of Mines, who's been an integral part of uh, the work that we've collectively done. Um, and he reminds me on a regular basis uh, when we are falling behind in a particular area on what we need to do to catch up, uh, refresh ourselves, et cetera. So David, um, Mr. Caesar, let me hand across to you and be looking forward to your address from the DMRE and from the Chief Inspector's Office. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Baxter, for, for, for the opportunity and the invitation uh, to collaborate with yourselves. But I think it's also important for me to acknowledge uh, the, the guests. I would uh, like to start off with Ms. Fagute, the President of the Mineral Council of South Africa, Mr. Temba um, Kwanazi, the Chair of the Minerals Council CO Zero Harm Forum, and yourself, Mr. Baxter, as the CEO of the Minerals Council. All the CEOs and executives from the sector who are present uh, in this engagement, all the organized labor uh, leaders, including from AMCO, NUM, NUMSA, Solidarity, and UASA, who are also present today, my colleagues from the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy and other departments who are in attendance, and also my colleagues from the Mine Health and Safety Council and the MQA, the media present today. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. And I'd like to start off uh, uh, by sh uh, sharing the same sentiments uh, uh, that you've indicated earlier, Mr. Baxter, that you know, we've agreed in the sector that we can com compete on anything in, in, in the sector, but not on health and safety. And in that spirit, we as a department have been working together with the, the, the employers and organized labor to ensure that there's an improvement, uh, a sustainable one in the, in the mining sector. The Department of Mineral Resources and Energy in collaboration with all our, our social partners, once again appreciates the opportunity to be part of the commemoration of the National Day of Health and Safety in Mining. We further commend the Minerals Council, South Africa, for arranging this event, especially at the beginning of Women's Month, an important month in the South African calendar, when all, all of us we will be uh, celebrating contributions of women in the broader society and in mining. We are hopeful that on top of our priorities from today onwards, we'll be focusing on the health and safety of the mine workers and people affected by mining, as this continue to be of utmost importance to all of us. The 2022 National Day Health and Safety in Mining must continue to provide a platform for learning and allow people to share ideas on improving health and safety at the, at the mines. As we commemorate this important day, it is important to remember that we are at a time when the mining industry still faces uh, the unprecedented challenges. COVID-19 still remains amongst us and continues to be infectious, as Mr. Baxter has indicated. The, the pandemic has reminded us as a nation that we are stronger together and we can do more uh, as, as a collective. We have all worked together to mitigate its impact in, this, in the sector. As Mr. Baxter, uh, Mr. Baxter has indicated, uh, there's been collectively 750 of our colleagues who lost their lives because of COVID in the sector. This is almost five times those who lost their lives as a result of mine accidents. Obviously, one life loss is one too many, but I think we've worked collectively well to mitigate the impacts in the, in the, in the sector. We wish to urge all mine workers to remain vigilant and not to relax due to COVID-19 fatigue. 
the department would like to remind all of us that the lifting of COVID-19 restriction, restrictions does not mean that the pandemic is over. Hence, we must all continue to follow uh, the health protocols as our best practice and guiding principles. Also, let us all continue to support and promote government vaccination rollout programs. The health and safety of mine, mine workers remain integral to the long-term sustainability of the mining sector and a key area of concern, which requires a consistent attention by all stakeholders. Working together with the mine employers and organized labor, the department has over the years made significant strides in improving the health and safety of the mine workers. This led to the sustainable downwards uh, trend in occupational fatalities, injuries, and diseases. The 2019 occupational safety statistics reflect the lowest fatalities ever recorded in the sector of 51 fatalities, as indicated by, as indicated by Mr. Baxter earlier. Also, the sector reported the lowest injuries and operational diseases during 2020. However, the sector experienced a regression in the number of fatalities as a result of mine accidents during the past two consecutive years. In this regard, a, a mine safe conference was convened, was convened during 20, uh, November 2021 where the Minister of Minerals, Resources and Energy engaged with the leaders from organized labor and employers on the challenges besetting the mining sector. Remember that time, uh, because we, we, we normally from experience know that uh, the last quarter of year becomes a challenge. We as a department, myself, have been calling CEOs, have been engaging with Mr. Baxter, Mr. Mkwanas to say, what more can we do? And we've agreed to call the union leaders as well to say what more can we do then we agree to uh, uh, to that mind safe conference where there's key areas that we've agreed we should focus on all the stakeholders recommitted themselves to all working towards the elimination of fatalities injuries and operational diseases in the sector in pursuit of zero harm to ensure that each employee returns from work and harm every day subsequently it is encouraging to know that the number of fatalities injuries and diseases have decreased for the year up to date as compared to the similar period in, in 2021. The latest statistics indicate that there has been a 34% reduction in the number, the number of fatal accidents from 29 during 2021 to 19 in 2022. These are the accidents that lead to fatalities. The number of the actual fatalities decreased by 14% from 29 last year to 25 in 2022. This is a result, as a result of a single accident that regrettably resulted in four fatalities in the sector. Also, it is worth noting that during 2022, one area in which the industry had achieved very considerably, considerable success was in reducing the number of deaths caused by fall of ground accidents. Once the biggest contributor to the death of mine workers, fall of, fall of ground now accounts for 4% of the number of occupational deaths in, this, in the sector. It is, it is also worth noting that the gold, platinum, and other mines did not experience full of ground fatalities for a year up to date. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, generally, most of the uh, full of ground accidents that happen in the gold and platinum mines, for us, is very encouraging that I think it's, 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 a, it's a first in a long time that for the last seven months, we'd never experienced any full of ground uh, um, accidents in the in these uh, three subsectors as that are related to and we'd like to really commend the sector for putting measures in improving in this regard. Regrettably, most of special fatalities in the sector are now associated with a general type of accidents that doubled the number of fatalities reported so far in 2022 from 5 to 10. Transportation of people and materials and operation of equipment are second biggest contributor to the fatalities in the, in, the, in the sector. And lastly, the 2022 fatalities include three mine deaths classified under the category miscellaneous, which refers to fatalities that may not be readily classified under the available categories on the SAMRA system, which is a system that we used to gather and analyze uh, accidents. Uh, and uh, they cannot be classified pending investigations. So we'd like to really request uh, the sector to ensure that we expedite the investigation process and then we find a way of resolving this type of accidents. Further, the actual injuries reported so far also decreased by about 11%, mainly with a 34% with reduction in the gold sector. 
Uh, during 2021, uh, if you look at the statistics that we collect in terms of health, there's uh, been uh, about a 5% decrease in the number of uh, facial diseases reported by the sector. Uh, uh, but we are still concerned that the pulmonary TB cases, noise induced hearing losses, and silicosis are still uh, the, 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 the major diseases reported by the sector. Once again, we'd like to implore the sector to focus on health matters. The department welcomes and once again value and value efforts of all our stakeholders in ensuring that the goal of zero harm is ultimately achieved at all minds. The collaboration and spirit of genuine tripartism stands at the very center of change and it will not happen without commitment of all partners. In this regard, the Mine Health and Safety Tripartite Summit will be held later this year to engage on the progress made on achieving the milestones, as well as the further interventions to be implemented as the sector continues on its journey towards zero harm. It is also critical to maintain and strengthen relationships at the mine level to ensure that the vision among stakeholders and representatives remain closely aligned. Why we're emphasizing on this is that one of the key things that we or concerns that we normally receive as a department is that from organized labor and workers is that uh, at the mind level, the, the, the tripartism is not as strong as it should be. And the mine workers organized labor are not given that opportunity uh, to, uh, to make contribution on health and safety matters. So we implore on all employers to ensure that we, we improve and also in this, uh, in this particular regard. The health and safety of mine workers is everyone's responsibility. Working together, we can attain the goal of zero harm in the sector while also keeping in mind that the long-term sustainability of mining is dependent not only on its growth, competitiveness and transformation, but also on how well its workforce is cared for. Uh, from my perspective, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I strongly believe as I close that all the trends that we've uh, uh, that spoken to um, and the downward trends that we've also spoken to that it's, it's mainly not only because of the role of the department, which is also key, but also the fact that we continue working together. We are still concerned that people are losing their lives in the sector. We are still concerned that there are injuries and diseases. And we believe that uh, by uh, collaborating with the sector, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll ultimately achieve the goal of zero harm. Uh, so I'd like to, to once again, uh, thank, thank the Minerals Council and all the colleagues for your attention and also for the invitation to, pass, to participate uh, in this uh, event. Thank you. Chief Inspector, Mr. Mcesar, thanks very much indeed. And uh, we certainly take on board your comments, but I think in the true spirit of partnership on what we're doing, working as a sector together uh, to improve health and safety in the sector, um, we have some encouraging trends, but uh, lots of hard work ahead of us. So looking forward to some further inputs um, from our trade union colleagues and partners at the same time. But before we get there, uh, uh, thanks Chief Inspector. What I'm gonna do is, is jump straight into uh, the first video, which is called Stepping Up to the Challenge, and that's around vaccine hesitancy. Uh, and then I'll introduce Stem and Gwanazi uh, to give a quick, uh, to give his input from a uh, from chairing the CEO Zero Harm Leadership Forum in the Minerals Council. So let's play that video, please. The most notable feature of the COVID-19 pandemic was the massive disruption to lives and livelihoods. Uh, there is a lot of work that was done across the industry by a lot of companies and it was good work. But uh, Anglo-American has the We Care program, which is a comprehensive approach looking at the lives and livelihoods of their employees and also of the you know, uh, people in the peri-mining communities. And so their program goes beyond the workplace. And what is also more significant for Kumba is that there was vaccine hesitancy, so they did not get there easily. Originally, when we started with the vaccination, as you can imagine, we did experience a lot of hesitancy from our employees and also our service providers. We picked up hesitancy from, from employees and members uh, throughout the process. So the resistance was coming mostly from those people who didn't believe that uh, this is the right 
solution for COVID-19. There was a lot of hesitancy in the beginning. However, we made use of our union representatives. We also made use of our service providers' leadership as well to help us in terms of influencing the people to vaccinate. But also, more importantly, we didn't have only just one centre where we were offering the vaccination, but we also moved the vaccination closer to the mine, whereby people could vaccinate at any given time without having to take the time off as well. From scratch, we recognize the importance of uh, information and uh, education. So we launched uh, campaigns that were aimed at uh, educating people and providing information both to our employees, their dependents and the community within which we operate. And those engagement that we had, both at a mass level and uh, on a one-to-one -one, uh, basis, actually made sure that people understand the importance of uh, protecting themselves through uh, vaccination. During the vaccination program, we had various engagements with uh, management and with our members. Um, there was engagements where the company engaged directly with the employees, where us as unions try to be part of as much as possible. Um, again, creating an open, transparent platform for employees and management to engage. We collaborated with the Department of Health, in the, both in the province and uh, at the district level. And we also pro, uh, collaborated with uh, four trade unions which, within our operations, which is uh, NUM, Solidarity, UASA and uh, AMCO. And that collaboration actually catapulted the number of people that we actually saw taking up uh, vaccination within our operations. All of this fits into Minerals Council strategy and especially what uh, uh, Anglo-American did. It, it, it fits very well in that the Minerals Council from the beginning has had a systematic manner in which it was approaching the disease. At the highest level, our CEOs were clear vaccination is going to be the way out of this pandemic. And so what was done across the industry on vaccination and what was done in Anglo on vaccination fits in very well with what our approach was. So Kirsten, thanks very much. Um, you can uh, stop it there. Let me uh, just say to all of you, uh, it makes me immensely proud to uh, work with so many capable people, uh, particularly in our healthcare and safety fraternity. And I just want to play and pay our incredible respects to the heroes uh, in the mining sector, particularly in our healthcare side, who helped roll out a 77% vaccination rate. So I think we must, uh, they are part of the real heroes of fighting this particular pandemic, which could have been a lot more damaging to the sector if we hadn't tackled it on a systematic basis, working in partnership with organized labor and with government. So without further ado, I'd like to hand across to Tembe Mponazi. He is not only a vice president of the Minerals Council, but he is also the chairman of the uh, CEO Zero Harm Leadership Forum, really leading the way. Uh, invisible felt leadership of what we do to improve the safety and health performance of the sector. Timber, over to you. Thank you uh, very much, um, Roger. Um, Chief Inspector of Mines, Mr. David um, Caesar, and other senior government officials, leaders from organized labor, fellow CEOs and company representatives, members of the media, uh, President uh, of the Minerals Council, Sisnolite Fagute, Office Bearers, CEO of the Minerals Council, um, and colleagues in the Minerals Councils, and all other guests, uh, good morning. I would like to express my personal condolences to the families and friends and colleagues of the 25 people who have died in mine accidents this year. And the families, friends, and colleagues of all who have succumbed to occupational diseases. I do this because even as I'm going to reflect on the improved health and safety situation, we have experienced in the past several months, 
I also need to remind myself and my fellow industry leaders that our work is not done, not by a long way. And we also need to always remember that any letting up of our efforts can lead to a regression of the sort that we saw in 2020 and 2021. By the 1st of August, 2022, the gold sector had reduced the number of fatalities by 21%, with 11 fatalities compared to 14 in 2021. The platinum mines have reported six fatalities, the same number as 2021 at this date. The coal sector reported three fatalities compared to four fatalities during the same period last year, a 25% reduction. There was no change for the other commodities, including diamonds, chrome, manganese, iron ore, aggregate sand and quarries, copper, zinc, nickel, and others. With five fatalities in the year to date, compared to five fatalities during the corresponding period last year. As at the 1st of August, 2022, there were 1,114 serious injuries reported compared to 1,252 during the same period in 2021, as the Chief Inspector has already mentioned. This is an overall improvement of just over 11%. On the health front, the statistics from the DMRE for 2020 continue to be a cause for concern regarding exposure to occupational hygiene stressors, which is our main area of focus as exposures lead to disease. In 2020, there was an increase in overexposures to airborne pollutants noise and heat stress. The good news was that there was a 35.7% decrease in reported occupational health diseases from 3,130 in 2019 to 2,013 in 2020. The incident of disease declined across all categories with the biggest decline seen in coal workers pneumonicosis and plum, pulmonary TB. We had a 44.6% decline in cases of TB from 1,533 in 2019 to 849 in 2020. This is to be commended given the significant work and the efforts that have been put through over the years. From our occupational health reporting system, we can report on our milestone performance for 2021. For respirable crystalline silica, we set an aspirational target of 8% of samples being less than 0.05 grams per meter cube. And this target was met. The industry also met the aspirational target for coal dust. This is encouraging news as it gives hope that we will meet the 2024 Mine Health and Safety Council milestones on dust exposures. The 2024 milestone target of no pieces of equipment emitting noise more than 107 decibels suggests that the Minerals Council members companies are on track to achieve the milestone target. Only 345 items of equipment do not meet this milestone target. In the video you have just seen, you will note, or the video that you are about to see, I should say rather, you will note how the industry has made a step change in eliminating noise at source and the tools that have been developed to support this aim. On the pneumonicosis and noise milestones, we have had a case confirmed 
And this means that our milestone targets have not been met. The Minerals Council is embarking on an exercise to analyze the pneumonicosis and the noise milestone cases with the aim of preventing these in the future. Turning back to safety, there has been a pleasing and unprecedented achievement of no fall of ground fatalities in the gold and platinum sectors in 2022 year to date, as you have heard from uh, Roger and Mr. Caesar. This is indeed a historic achievement. The one fall of ground fatality reported in 2022 occurred in a coal mine in the first quarter. This achievement can be attributed to a combination of factors, including in part the fall of ground action plan we launched at last year's National Day of Health and Safety. I have no doubt that the collaboration between stakeholders from government and organized labor, the Minerals Council, and its member companies played a significant role in this journey. And I want to dwell for a few minutes uh, though on the incredible important role of leadership, a role and responsibility that we as the CEOs, the DMRE and union leaders share. In the context of the CEO Zero Harm Forum, and the Kumbulekaya strategy. And we call this CEO-ship. Now, the first principle is, as I always say, that we have to show up. But the second is that we must step up to the challenge as per the theme of this day, when we are required to do so and take bold moves to recalibrate and reset when it is required. Now we did this in January, 2019, when we started a heartfelt conversation among CEOs that led to the Kumbulekaya strategy that focuses on above all else, saving lives. And we did this again in December, 2021. After a most unbearable time when we lost 11 people in mine accidents within a period of two weeks, a very, very difficult period and a very difficult time. It is no coincidence that the 2019 reset then led to the best safety performance on record for the industry. And the improved performance in 2022 to date has seen no fall of ground fatalities in the gold and platinum sectors this year. This is a significant milestone. The fall of ground action plan with a five-year investment of 46 million rand was indeed intended to achieve a step change in eliminating fall of ground fatalities. And this, by the way, was over and above significant investments that have been made in this area. Significant progress has been made in the various pillars of the plan. In February, the Minerals Council Board held a special learning session with a presentation of two initiatives from the fall of ground action plan that were identified as high potential impact for safety improvement. These were barring technologies and permanent area coverage for narrow stopes. The board decided to commit senior production staff from each mining company to form part of a high level task team to provide oversight and support of these two projects. A fall of ground day of learning was held in March 2022 in partnership with AMSA, SACMA, SANRE, and RETC. Close to 200 delegates attended, representing a cross section of stakeholders from the mining industry. Senior members of the industry gave compelling presentations 
on leading practices and new research projects geared towards accelerating the elimination of fall of ground fatalities. And as part of the implementation of the fall of ground action plan, investigations into stop lightning practices have been concluded at Northern Platinum, Northern Platinum's Elan Mine and Anglo-American's Platinum Dishaba Mine. The stop lighting leading practice, which is being launched today, will immensely improve underground workplaces visibly. In the video, again, that you will see, you will get some insight into the underground workplace eliminating challenge and how this is being dealt with at Eland. Another gratifying achievement is that the industry has seen zero trackless mobile machinery, TMM, fatalities in the year to date. In 2021, the Minerals Council started work on a special project focusing on industry alignment and the implementation of TMM regulations. To address transport-related safety, a series of engagements with industry stakeholders, including organized labor, the DMRE, and, and the Mineral Health and Safety uh, 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 um, uh, uh, Council, suppliers, research institutions, and universities were held to ensure that there was alignment on the holistic risk phase implementation of the collision prevention system technologies by the end of December, 2023. Now, while we have made progress, much work still needs to be done. And again, the collaboration between industry, government, unions, OEMs and universities is critical. And I'm confident that we can achieve the step change that we need. We just need to commit and we need to push harder and collaborate hard. However, a worrying trend has been observed regarding winch related fatalities. The industry has recorded three winch related fatalities this year, a higher incident than has been the case over the last six years. A special focus on safety issues associated with winches has been planned starting with a winches day of learning next month because these days of learning are highly impactful each and every one of us who has attended these days of learning learn immensely and it actually challenges our thinking and the way we approach the challenges that we have but more importantly effective measures are put in place in terms of taking away forward the solutions and the prevention of the incidents and fatalities that we have in this space. Prevention of exposures is the key to eliminating occupational diseases. A key initiative adopted by the Minerals Council is management of significant occupational health hazards through continuous real-time monitoring. To this end, a revised guidance document has been adopted by the CO Zero Harm Forum and will ensure the incorporation of industry best practice on this regard. A well-defined noise exposure management and hearing conservation program involves the assessment of personal, workplace and machinery noise as one of its fundamental elements. The industry has run noise workshops with the aim of improving the quality of noise measurements and the reporting of the results. These workshops included the newly developed critical noise equipment screening tool, which promotes high quality equipment noise registers at workplace as required by the newly promulgated guideline for compilation of mandatory code of practice for an occupational health program for noise. And we look forward to seeing positive results from these initiatives, just like we've seen in the other areas. We have also placed great focus on workplace culture. The Mine Health and Safety Council 2011 Culture Transformation Program has 11 pillars 
that are being worked through. For 2022, the Minerals Council is prioritizing a shift from a blame culture to a just culture. A blame culture is actually counterproductive and increases safety risks. When people make mistakes or notice problems for which they or their teams may have been responsible for, many will seek to conceal those errors and blame others. And that means that others will not learn from their mistakes. Or worse, others might be injured or killed through the concealing of problems in the hope that they will never be noticed. A just culture encourages learning and it does not eliminate accountability. It is though a critical change in a more than a hundred year old culture. And the just culture accountability framework was developed and approved by the CEOs in 2021. The main aim is to support members in transforming their culture from a blame to a just culture with the appropriate learning and accountability. Each member is being asked to implement a gap analysis of their practice using the just culture accountability framework. And each will develop an action plan to address identified gaps. Another initiative is the independent peer review of incident investigation and analysis systems, which is a project originating from the 2019 Kumbulekaya launch. We are seeking to improve the quality of accident and incident investigations through peer review methodologies and to enable companies to learn better and faster. It would also be remiss of me in Women's Month in South Africa, not to reflect on the very disturbing reports on gender-based violence that we have seen from around the world, but including in South Africa, particularly in the workplace. We have been aware of this, and this is a fundamental part of the Women in Mining initiatives, which Cisnolita will no doubt touch on. But these reports are a stark reminder that we need to do more. And I can assure you, our stakeholders, that we as the CO Zero Harm Forum are seized with this as a priority. We must ensure that women are safe and feel safe at work. And we have a zero tolerance attitude in terms of dealing and tackling this. Before I close, I want to once again, touch on the strength of collaboration. As I mentioned, an emergency Minerals Council special board meeting was held in December, 2021, following the multi-stakeholder MindSafe conference held in November 2021 in response to the deteriorating safety performance. And the Minerals Council board members fully supported the Healing the Wound Mind Safe 2021 commitments jointly agreed by the DMRE, organized labor, supply organizations, professional associations, and the Mine Health and Safety Council and the Mine Qualifications Authority. And I've got to thank Mr. Mcesar, the Chief Inspector, for his leadership as well, in terms of driving the efforts for us in having the Mind Safe 2021 workshop and the discussions in terms of the resets discussions that we had as CEOs in the Minerals Council. The stakeholders recommitted themselves to working towards the elimination of fatalities, injuries and occupational diseases on South Africa's mines in pursuit of zero harm to ensure that each employee returns from work unharmed each and every day. The Minerals Council looks forward to the Mine Health and Safety Summit later this year to review progress, success and challenges 
towards the achievement of the milestones on occupational health and safety. Colleagues, thank you for your time today, indicating as it does your commitment to a safer and a healthier mining industry in South Africa. We can be quite pleased by the improvements that we are seeing in 2022, but we cannot lower our guard since there is still much to be done, since one fatality is still one fatality too many. Thank you very much. Back to you, Roger. Uh, Timber, thank you very much. And thank you for your CEO-ship and your real showing up in every single one of the discussions. And uh, uh, also, Yapi Fullard as your deputy chair uh, in the CEO Zero Harm Leadership Forum team. So uh, no doubt, um, stakeholders and the partners that we have here, uh, we're stepping up to the, to, to the challenge and, and trying to resolve the issues. Absolutely. So appreciate that. Uh, very detailed, but also very critical input on what we're doing uh, collaboratively to resolve some of the issues. Timber, thanks for that. Let me go straight into the uh, stepping up to the challenge around noise measurement. And I'm gonna ask Kis Kisten if he wouldn't mind coming in and starting that video, please. Thank you. Exposure to noise has been identified as one of the most significant occupational health risks in the industry. This is because the exposure to high levels of noise for a long time can result in permanent hearing loss, which cannot be fixed, even with surgery or a hearing aid. Noise-induced hearing loss is often underestimated as an occupational disease because it is slow and painless. The impact of noise-induced hearing loss is very wide. I normally personalize its impact when we engaging with employees to say, imagine you work for so long, and then after that you want to enjoy your retirement and pension, but you can't hear your grandkids or your family. So that is one of the major impacts that noise-induced hearing loss comes with. It also causes physical and psychological stress, reduces productivity and interferes with communication and concentration, which can contribute to workplace accidents and injuries. Even short-term exposure to high levels of noise can also impact your hearing, making your ears feel, feel clogged up or causing a ringing sensation. These may go away within a few minutes or hours after the noise stops. However, repeated exposure to high levels of noise will likely cause permanent hearing loss and or tinnitus. The response to the management of noise-induced hearing loss by the industry has been phenomenal because this has been a tripartite effort which involved all stakeholders and this has assisted in the establishment of the milestones for noise which lead which indicate that you must make sure that by 2024 you don't have noise equipment that emits uh, noise that exceeds 107 decibels and when we look at the STS then it must not exceed 25 decibels at 2000, 3000 and 4000 hertz and this has also led to the establishment of some of the amazing leading practices such as the industry by quiet and maintain quiet initiatives which then makes us manage noise at source before it gets to the working place. These noise milestones are not only aimed at the reduction of noise emissions of individual equipment within working places, but also at the reduction of employee exposure to noise and at reducing the social burden of noise-induced hearing loss. They are fundamental in ensuring that the industry manages the risk and they help ensure that we achieve the noise milestones agreed for the South African mining industry. I would like to urge all mining companies to make use of the industry-wide Buy and Maintain Quiet initiative suite of documents and materials on the MOSH website. This will help us strengthen our efforts to control noise at source and ultimately achieve the noise milestones agreed for the South African mining industry.
Uh, thanks very much uh, indeed, Kirsten, uh, for that video and for Vili Daisel and uh, a number of the people involved in uh, production of that video, uh, video around how, our approach to dealing with uh, managing noise levels and uh, the significant work that's been done. Again, it's a great privilege for me to be able to work with such talented, capable people who are really making a difference in the lives of all our workers in the industry itself. So, uh, colleagues, um, it gives me great pleasure to uh, um, welcome into the discussion uh, a number of our uh, critical stakeholders. Um, I know that uh, Kolani Bokoloshi can't make the meeting, unfortunately, but he is more than adequately represented by Gabriel and Corsi from the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union, uh, which we call AMCU for short. Uh, and I'm going to start off with, with asking Gabriel to just give us uh, a few reflections from AMCU's side and uh, and then I'll go straight into Naki Masuboleli, uh, who is uh, the senior rep from the National Union of Mine Workers, uh, Hanli Van Vuren, who is one of the critical office bearers in solidarity, and Franz Steering, who is uh, the general secretary of UASA. Uh, so we'll take that in that order, but I'd like to welcome Gabriel and uh, looking forward to your comments on the partnership that we have in place uh, around our drive towards zero harm. Gabriel, over to you, thank you. Thanks, Chair. Good morning to organized business, DMRE present, Mine Health and Safety Council, organized labor, all protocol observed. Let me take this opportunity and commend Platinum and Gold for registering zero fatalities on the most dangerous agency called Fall of Ground. This move is not going unnoticed. However, the SAMRAS a summary report received on 1st August 2022 show that there is 31% reduction on fall of ground related injuries. When you look at Frank Bates accident triangle, to have 159 fall of ground accident in this year, highlight that there is a still a need to strengthen controls of fall of ground and reduce these injuries then we can safely say the zero fatalities in gold and platinum are as a result of strong control, not lucky as injuries highlight failure in applying controls of fall of ground. DMRE section 54s are not taken serious by mine employers. Section 54 were given in one of the mines in Rustenburg with similar unsafe condition being observed in each visit by the inspector. Same condition resulted in multiple fatalities last year. DMR section 54 was given to one of the mines in Free State. Section 54 completely ignore multiple fatalities occur as a result of, 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 of that. It worries me that undertakings and commitment made regarding 11 cultural pillars some has not been realized. There was a commitment made in 2014 milestone that by 2020, there will be zero fatalities. Last year, DMRE registered 74 fatalities, which excluded one mine fatal of the security guard that was killed at Sibanya Steel Water Gold by Zama Zama. The issue of the security kill at Sibanya Steel Water Drifontein, it's really sad. You are employed as a security to patrol, guard, and search. You are killed while doing what you are employed for, but the fatal does not appear in books as mine accident. Your family can't claim compensation. I appeal to you, Mineral Council and DMRE, to stop hiding fatal accident of those who are injured or killed by Zama Zama. It is the employer obligation to ensure safe work environment and to prevent unauthorized entry to the mine. Hence, it is crucial uh, to include the significant risk of Zama Zama as, uh, in your risk assessment so that you manage that, you control that as the mine. And in case where a mine worker is killed or injured by Zama Zama, that particular work need to be assisted to be compensated. Mineral Council wanted extension of TMR regulation, part that deals with collision avoidance on diesel machines. 
We rose and opposed their submission as AMCO, but they managed to corner their friend, MREP, at the Mine Health and Safety Council, who agreed to give them extension until December 2023. Three employees were killed by an LHD, which ran uncontrolled at Vitrix, whilst the Mineral Council enjoyed the extension in the implementation of collagen avoidance in diesel machine. We are going to ask the minister at the Occupational Health and Safety Summit this year in October if he is aware about the extension because it is the minister that must grant exemption of the regulation, not MREC or the council. Lastly, mines should not have safety reps for the sake of complying with the law. Safety reps are there for reason and purpose. Empower the safety reps as the employer in order for them to stop unsafe acts and unsafe conditions. We are aware that safety reps have certain power as per law, Mine Health and Safety Act, but those powers, if not given a space to be executed, they just remain in the act, not applied because the employer does not promote that. Thank you very much. Gabriel, uh, thanks very much indeed for your inputs and as always, uh, very frank uh, uh, deliberations from the AMCU side and I think that's um, very much in the spirit of us trying to resolve the issues together and you raised a couple of points that we will go back and investigate uh, and we'll obviously engage with the DMRE and yourselves on them um, in terms of what you stated in your comments um, and uh, fully agree safety reps are there to make sure that safety regs are enforced etc so uh, let's take it forward a couple of those comments and i'm gonna uh, we'll certainly uh, do some investigation from our side on them so colleagues so uh, thanks let me ask uh, naki masubulele uh, who is the national union of mine workers senior rep on health and safety and uh, naki let me hand over to you for your comments please looking forward to that thank you thank you very much sir. let us also appreciate the time as the national union of mine workers we also greet all the stakeholders without naming them because we may make a mistakes of not mentioning one of the important stakeholders. So we equally uh, greet the stakeholders who are present here. And let, let us first appreciate the fact that we, we reached this stage and uh, we, we, we are proud to celebrate the, the, the impact that is done by all of us to make sure that we we achieve a fatality free shift to some of the companies and uh, it will be very important for us as nvm that at once in a year we we celebrate to all the companies when they are uh, uh, achieving such a victory of a, a zero fatality so it 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 is, it is very important that we take safety as Gabriel already said, and other stakeholders that have already spoken before us, that we take safety as a priority, not by theory, but by practice. It is very disturbing to us as NUM that whenever we go to companies at times, we still find it very difficult to balance between production and safety. And we, we believe well, this is one part that we are still struggling. And it will be very key that we, 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 we fight and make sure that as much as we are production companies we work for profit, but I don't think there will be any company that will celebrate a profit that is full of blood. So we, 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 we want to agree with Ndadem Caesar that some of the practices or some of the good initiatives that are done at national level are not reaching the ground where people are or where these things have to, to be implemented. You find that the safety is, is the, the, the safety structures, like your tripartite as mentioned by Nadem Caesar, is intact at national level. You go down there, some of the structures are not involved and some of the structures are getting second-hand information. And obviously this is something that we really don't understand. And we call upon the companies that are still giving labor organizations a second-hand information when it comes to safety. We, we, we believe that working together, as it was alluded here, that there was, there was a tie 
where all of us were facing a, a situation where all of us we didn't have an experience of how to deal with, which was COVID-19. And uh, we, we went through those challenges by making sure that we join hands and work together. And uh, at this particular time, when we face fatalities in the mining industry, we, we see no difference or no difficulty for us to work together and make sure that we treat each other equally so. We don't prioritize some of the issues which are not which are not allowed to, 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 to get involved by the, by the organized labor. As the NUM, we want to also mention one part that we, we as an industry were lacking, the part of giving a moral support to our workers. And as much as we appreciate the impact that we are doing in terms of safety, but there is mental health that is still a challenge in all, all, all the industries. And we appreciate the companies that already in, initiated some of the issues that are covering this space. Because you only find that when there is an incident or a fatal, we always go there and blame each other. Of course, this is something that is not uh, good for us as, as people who are responsible to make uh, uh, the, the industry safe. One other area that we want to, to mention is the, is, the, is, is the change of culture and tradition. We still feel that for us to improve more on health and safety, we must agree and adapt on change of culture and traditions on how we do things. There are a lot of issues that are happening there. Some are mentioned by AMCO. There are a lot of things that, are, are, that we can list that are still happening in an old way of doing things of which we believe that if we can accommodate our workers and treat them as equal as, 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 as each one of us. So, so, so that they feel that in a company, they are not there because they're employed. They are there uh, being part of the company themselves. So this is one part that we feel as NUM that it must be uh, uh, taken care of and we must make sure that when we deal with change of culture and traditions, we really make things easier for our workers and we accommodate all our workers on whatever that we are doing and we are making a change. One of the things that are very much uh, disturbing, I mentioned by Gabriel, I wanted to mention, but I don't want to waste time to repeat, but it is very disturbing that them says that at this particular point in time, we will find fatalities like the one yeah, 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 of Rustenberg in Makubung mine where you find that there was section 54 and the, before that section 54 uplifted, then there was a fatal on the very same issue that section 54 was issued for. So these issues are issues that are raised that we are not working together we not, and we are not committed to make sure that we improve it and save. It can be correct that there will be a regulator that will be responsible for the, the, for the, for the health and safety of workers of which for us who are in the industry as management and the trade unions, we will only wait for the regulator to come and tell us where things are going wrong. This is where these things start. The regulator is there to assist us. So we must make sure whatever is picked up by the regulator, we are making sure that we even dig down to find what are the other issues that may emanate to a, a result to an injury, an injury or to a fatal not waiting for DMR to tell us each and every time that there is a, a, there, there are non-compliance in what we are doing while in the working place where we are working. And, and so with, with, with that note, we don't want to belong. We want to stress it too much that we appreciate the fact that we are still making sure, still able to achieve a, 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 a fatal free on, on fall of grounds on, to eliminate fall of grounds fatals, but uh, there is still more fatals that are happening. And some of the fatals that are happening now, lately, they are happening as if we, uh, we don't have safety reps, like a fatal where we find an employee was uh, involved in, in a fire at a tier room. So these are the things that we can avoid. So these are the things that working together, we can achieve and making sure that we avoid. Having 25 at this, at this particular time of the year, it's not, it's not a good, it's not a good picture. It's painting a wrong picture with us as South African people who are responsible for making sure that we're working together in terms, in terms of achieve, achieving zero harm in this industry. So, so we, we still call upon all stakeholders and we avail ourselves as 10 p.m. 24 seven, whenever there is a need for us to discuss on health and safety issues, we are welcoming that. So with that note, HM, 
Thank you very much. Lucky, thanks very much for your um, your heart, heartfelt inputs there. And uh, just to highlight uh, uh, the points that you have highlighted, I think uh, uh, certainly we, we, we've noted them, taken them on board. And I think uh, one of the recurring themes coming through uh, is related to national level agreements not necessarily being applied at a local level. Uh, obviously, that might be different on a case by case basis, but uh, something we need to look at very carefully. Uh, and on the mental health issues, which is not insignificant, uh, given the fact that we've been through a very difficult two years under under the COVID lockdown, and that's also had an, uh, 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 you know quite a big impact on mental health of people, and and our workforce in particular. So we'll pick up on those points and appreciate you making them. Let me then go to uh, Advocate Hanley Van Vuren. She's the head of Occupational Health and Safety at Solidarity, and uh, Hanley, looking forward to your inputs also. Um, over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, the President of the Minerals Council, Mrs. Kuda, the Vice President, CEO, Mr. Baxter, Chief Inspector of Mines, Mr. Mcisa, other leaders of the industry. Um, I send my uh, apologies from Mr. Gideon de Plessis and Advocate Paul Marden. I'm going to switch off my video as I see it is, uh, I don't have a stable connection if that's in fine with you. The importance of health and safety was recently um, acknowledged by the International Labour Conference as the fifth fundamental principle of human rights at work. And it's also echoed in, echoed in our constitution, the constitution of South Africa, the right to life, the right to dignity, the right to fair labor practices, etc. One of our previous ministers, uh, Minister Susan Shabangu said, if you can't mine safely, you should not be mining. It's not about whether you are a big enterprise or small one, you should do it safely. From solidarity side, we welcome the improvement in the safety performance, but we have to remain vigilant and even rethink how and what we are doing. And we have to put all available resources into it. That being said, I welcome the uh, references that was made this morning um, very often about collaboration, relationships, the importance of um, organized labor's involvement, partnerships with organized labor. That is one of the resources that I believe is not being used and utilized to its full capacity in the mining industry. At the shop floor level, um, that it is for that reason that we as solidarity um, in our proposals to the amendment of the Mine Health and Safety uh, Act propose that um, each union with members at a mine be actively involved in investigations in terms of Section 11. And also, each of them prepare and submit their own report on what they believe to be the root cause of an accident. Um, this is in line with the peer review approach. And it's not to blame the company, but it is in the search for the root cause and to enable and empower minds and workers to address those root causes. Now, as it's Women's Month, I have to refer to the plight of women. We have to speak up. Women in mining and on behalf of women affected by mining. It was as a horror movie that we saw last week that brave woman that told the Minister of Police of the impact of illegal mining 
on their communities. How women is gang raped by apparently some Zamas. The gender-based violence that goes with that. I appeal to the DMRE, the South African Police Services, mining houses, unions, community members. We need to take hands and eradicate these atrocities from our mines and our mining communities. You cannot expect a worker com coming from such a community to work safe. How, where will their mind be if they aren't or Oma or Google was raped, gang raped? It's incomprehensible. And also workers facing illegal miners in their workplaces, creating unsafe conditions for which they are not prepared. They come to work and they are shot at. They come to work and there is some form of other hazard that was not there and should not have been there had it not been for the activities of illegal miners. And as Gabriel has referred to it, COIDA does not cover all of these instances. And I want to appeal to employers to assist those employees that are affected as far as absolutely possible. On Women in Mining itself at the Mine Health and Safety Council, and again on um, the amendments, the proposed amendments, I would like to respectfully request that all stakeholders support the proposal uh, regarding suitability of PPE, but also that we go further and make facilities part and parcel of that. So that the facilities that women have to use above ground and underground is suitable for the gender issues. That will preserve and enhance that women work with dignity and safely above ground and underground. Thank you. And I would like to encourage as a last word that all mining companies invest in unions, use their wealth of experience and knowledge. And unions, take your place at the table, come to the party in a positive manner and contribute to the health and safety of workers in mines. Thank you. Andy, thanks very much indeed for those inputs and those specific ideas. Uh, I think uh, uh, we absolutely agree with the criticality of partnership working together, and that's a, the overriding theme. And uh, certainly don't like the horror movie that you talked about, uh, but at the same time, uh, the industry through the Minerals Council obviously doing a lot of work um, encouraging government and the security cluster to manage and deal with the illegal mining uh, Zama Zama related issues. So that is an ongoing uh, particular process and um, uh, certainly take your other points into account. Thank you very much. Um, so colleagues, without further ado, if I can ask uh, Franz Steering. Uh, Franz is the Divisional Manager for Mining uh, at UASA, the Union. And Franz, uh, let me hand directly across to you for your comments, which I know will always be direct. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, president from the uh, Minerals Council, Mrs. Nolita Fakadu, our prestigious Chief Inspector of Mines, Mr. David Masiza, all other CEOs from the Minerals Council, as well as leaders from the industry. An injury to one is an injury to all. We all remember that slogan, 
Let's keep that in mind as we need to be our brother's keeper. The mining industry in South Africa faces real challenges with regards to the improvement of health and safety in line with the tripartite summit plan, where we have pledged to align ourselves with the international standards by 2024, only one year away or two years away. Historically, it was claimed that training was not really a contributing factor. In most case, cases, it is stated that the training content is deemed to be comprehensive and adequate. The question, however, is how to improve adherence to standards where training content is not the issue. Complacency also is raised as a major factor in terms of health and safety related accidents and incidents. Um, I make two conclusions as departure point for the rest of my discussion. One, standard pr procedures are not adequately learned by employees. Attitude influence behavior of employees. As part of a proactive strategy decision taken by the Mine Health and Safety Council, pledge signed by all recognized unions, mineral council members, and on behalf of business and the inspectorate, our previous safety summit launched a very important safety drive that culminated into a very aggressive safety risk management process, which incorporates the following. We put safety first in everything we do. We make safety a way of life inside and outside of the workplace. We show genuine concern and take responsibility for our own safety and that of others. We have the right to withdraw from a dangerous condition as per section 23 of the act. We truly believe that all injuries are preventable. We continuously raise, uh, 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 reassess risk and comply with rules and procedures. To be able to implement the above, one needs to know possible hazards in the workplace and to apply the four steps to safety. It should, however, be drilled into the physique of every individual working in or on a mine. Why? The four steps to safety represents the fundamental way in eliminating accidents. It is common knowledge to everyone in the industry. In other words, we need to return back to basics. I believe that in the event that we succeed to eliminate complacency, enforce the basic four steps to safety, identify high risk areas, and if we cannot manage it, and if, if we cannot, then we withdraw as per section 23. Make a break, breakthrough in the literary gap. Provide training in a language of choice. Find user-friendly technology for training employees involving all five senses. We will be a step further on the road to, uh, to zero harm. Yoasa acknowledges and commend all role players in terms of where we are with our safety statistics currently. And we wish to challenge all employees to pledge its support towards zero harm as mining related death have often too many children, widowed too many women and devastated too many families. And that is why we need to support uh, that is why we need your support in the mining industry of South Africa. Mr. Baxter, thank you very much. Franz, uh, thanks very much indeed for those uh, comments and uh, for refreshing our uh, inputs specifically around uh, attitude affects behavior, um, complacency and other factors that come into the equation, standards and others. And again, certainly uh, all relevant points that we'll pick up on as we take them forward. So appreciate uh, your contributions. So, so ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to say thank you very much uh, to 
the leadership team is from all our trade union partners in this journey uh, of uh, improving health and safety in the mining sector, uh, as well as um, the chief inspector. And what I'd like to do now um, uh, under your uh, guidance uh, is to um, go straight into the last video, which is just a, 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 an input on tackling the fall of ground issue through improving lighting. And this is the, one of the leading practices and stepping up to the challenge at Northern Platinum's Elon Mine. And that will be just before uh, the Minerals Council President, Ms. Nolita Fakorde, uh, gives some final thoughts and reflections and, and closes off this particular session. So let's uh, go straight, Kirsten, if you don't mind, into that video. And uh, I'll then introduce Nolita. Thank you. majority of, of fatal accidents, fall of ground fatal accidents, still happen in the stoping environment on the mine. So we know that fall of grounds are the number one killer in the mining industry in our country, but the majority of those accidents happen in an in a area zero to four meters from the stoping face in conventional faces. So it was very important for us to look at, at things to improve the opportunity that our workforce has to identify fall of ground hazards in that area. Force of ground are historically the biggest contributor to industry fatalities. The Minerals Council CEO Zero Harm Forum mandated the Minerals Council's Rock Engineering Technical Committee to collaborate with the South African Institute of Rock Engineers to propose recommendations on how to improve rock related safety performance. So, the Force of Ground Elimination of Fatalities Action Plan is a result of many hours of collaborative labor between the Rock Engineering Technical Committee and SANAE supported by SEGMA and AMSA. At Elon Mine, we have an undulating shear zone over the entire ore body, which makes it geotechnically a little bit complex for us. So from the beginning, we figured that we, we would want to improve lighting amongst other things on the mine so that we could better identify hazards and, and react to those hazards. Underground lighting is very important for the employees to identify hazards. Because our members are most of the time subjected to very trying conditions underground. And having illumination that is very bright down there, they can, they can identify hazards that can save lives. What Elant has done to improve the underground lighting conditions is from the onset when we started the mine, we went out and we, and we looked for, for different suppliers, different kinds of technologies that were available at the time. We early on identified a product we liked, something that was robust, was easy to install and remove. And we rolled it out from the onset on the mine, not just uh, in the stoping environment, but across the whole property. I believe that coupled with all the other MOSH initiatives that we've also adopted has gone a long way to making Elant, when it comes to fall of ground accidents, a very safe mine. Elon Mine has demonstrated how adequate in-stop lighting can improve working conditions and reduce force of ground risks by identifying them early and correctly. It also revealed that adequate in-stop lighting increases both employee morale and productivity. Employees and members have welcomed the improvement because now it has enhanced visibility and it also assists with the safety factor when it comes to women. They feel also safe when they are underground with the visibility and the illumination that is underground. Addressing these activities through the adoption of the six pillars of the action plan will help the industry reach its zero harm goals. The six pillars focus on adoption of leading practices, implementation of research, capacity building of rock engineers, implementation of policies, facilitating a zero harm enabling environment and monitoring of force of ground safety performance. The action plan approved in July 2021 includes a financial investment of 40 million rands over five years towards research and development and an additional 6 million rands over three years for skills development.
Kirsten, thank you very much. And uh, thanks very much to Lorato Tsele, uh, who has also been doing a fantastic job uh, in the Minerals Council team, working with uh, the membership and our MOSH team, the Mine Occupational Safety and Health Learning Hub team, um, in terms of uh, the work that's gone into developing the six pillars of the Fall of Ground Action Plan. And this demonstrates how the industry is really stepping up to the challenge. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, we come to the particular point where the Minerals Council President is going to make some closing remarks and uh, give her some of her reflections. I've always known her for her CEOship and her leadership uh, in the way that we are tackling and in particular embracing the criticality of partnership uh, in sorting out and resolving um, challenges that we face from, from a, a health and safety point of view and many other areas at the same time. Uh, it's indeed been a, a remarkable privilege to work with her and in her forthright people way uh, of how we resolve particular challenges uh, uh, through partnership uh, in, these, in these different areas. So I have no doubt that she's going to emphasize that particular point. She's also been a critical leader in what we're trying to do to change the game from a, um, a di uh, diversity and inclusion perspective, and in particular, her leadership of the Women in Mining Leadership Program in the Minerals Council, but her also overall leadership of the Minerals Council. Nolita, um, can I hand across to you for closing comments, please? Uh, thank you very much, Roger, for uh, the introductions and the kind remarks. Good morning, colleagues. Chief Inspector of Mines, uh, Mr. David Msiza, and other senior government officials with us in this platform this morning, leaders from organized labor, uh, especially from AMCO, uh, good Gabriel, Mr. Ngosi, uh, NUM, Mr. Masi Bulele, as well as the Solidarity, Advocate Van Furen, Hanley, and uh, lastly, but not least, from Uwasa, Mr. Franz Dering. Thank you very much for your contributions and being here with us again on this journey. The various company representatives with us here, as well as Minerals Council colleagues and other CEOs with us, especially members that are led by our chair of the CEO Zero Forum, uh, Temba Mkwanazi, and many others. Once again, good morning, and thank you very much for your contributions uh, in what has been a very candid and thought-provoking session uh, this morning. I would like to thank you again um, for your heartfelt contributions and also the commitment you have shown to tackle these critical challenges facing our industry. And uh, without rehashing what has already been said, I'd like to, however, reinforce the importance of our Kumbule Kaya campaign as the foundation of our health and safety strategy. You know, as much as this strategy was set up in 2019, almost four years ago, uh, and at the time focusing on three areas of the strategy, um, we do realize now, even from this conversation, that Kumbule Kaya has much more of a broader meaning and opportunity for us to pull everything together as we continue to lead and talk about the issues of health and safety in all its dimensions within the industry. With the focus that was set up in 2019, most importantly being that of prevention of fatalities. Secondly, the integration of health and safety into our way of work and thirdly, the increasing of the need for intensified vigilance and efforts on both fronts, and especially with the emphasis on the right of all employees to say no to unsafe work. It is very clear that we, as much as have achieved a lot to date, we still have a long way to go. Let me also remind you that 
we have as much as we have announced that we will build on this campaign by using the theme of stepping up to the challenge. The theme also recognizes the good work that we have done to date and also recognizes the fact that the challenges ahead all of us are going to require all of us to think differently about how to resolve these issues. Kumbuli Kaya, as we know, is a Nguni word, which means remember home. And our focus is through the National Day of Health and Safety in Mining have tended to be very much around the physical safety within the workplace. However, we know and we have experience and heard also this morning that the issue of physical safety extends beyond the mining gates, particularly when it comes to the host communities and the lives of our employees, our colleagues, and especially women as they find themselves with their families in these communities. And so Kumbulikaya for me, especially today and during Women's Month has taken on a very different meaning and also therefore a different opportunity. And I would like to urge and appeal to our colleagues, all of you on this platform, first to, to the CEO of Ham Forum, uh, led by Temba, that as you continue to role model the CEO ship on the issues of safety and being relentless in stepping up, that you also include and embrace with you the issues of making sure that we create a safe space for women to work within the workplace and also a safe space, safe space at home and also in the communities because all of us are leaders both at work and also in, in the communities. As business, together with our regulator and labor unions, we need to step up to the challenges simultaneously. simultaneously. We cannot and should not work in isolation. The challenge at hand is a shared problem. Temba has also shared with us the great strides that we have made since 2019. And this has largely been attributed to the fact that we've worked together as partners and not in isolation. Mr. Msiza, we do know that through the Mine Health and Safety Council, which has become a trusted partner in the industry in terms of giving guidance on various issues around health and safety, the DMRE continues to also look to the Mine Health and Safety Council on other issues. And in this instance, we would really urge you to look deeper into how we make sure that the workplace becomes really a safe space for women to work in, especially being safe from harm, harassment, as well as gender-based violence. As our CEO, Roger Bexa, also often remarks, there is no competition when it comes to safety and health. We are all working on the same set of challenges, such as volatile commodity prices, rising inflation, challenging communities, and socioeconomic imbalances. We cannot let these issues take our eye off the proverbial ball which is to preserve human life whilst carrying out our activities. To our colleagues from the labor unions, especially AMCO, NUM, Solidarity and UASA, please continue to ensure that you take ownership of the joint stewardship that we offer through this platform through collaborations and coordinated efforts and really partnerships that deliver visible results. Like we have seen in our response during COVID-19 and also keeping us accountable. We know we would not have seen the results that we have seen when it came to the COVID-19 response, were it not 
on the way and through the way we work together and partnered to make sure that we not only screened appropriately, but also we tested and eventually vaccinated all the employees and communities who were willing and making themselves available for these opportunities. We therefore know that these partnerships work when we are all committed to solve the issues at hand. As many of the colleagues have indicated, uh, with August is Women's Month in South Africa. And it's therefore also important for me to use this platform to salute and recognize all of our colleagues within the mining sector who continue to create and to work hand in hand to ensure gender equality and transformation becomes a reality in terms of the people who work within our industry. The Minerals Council Women in Leadership Forum all, also appreciates and relies on everyone's support, labor, management, and all employees to ensure that the workplace becomes a safe space for women and men, safe and free against harassment, as I have indicated, bullying, as well as gender-based violence. This Women's Month, we must as well recommit ourselves to this safety aspect. Colleagues, through you, Roger Baxter, I would like to also put forward the proposal that we cannot continue to run in the same month of August parallel programs on safety. And, and then two weeks later, we run one on women safety in the mining industry. Maybe this is about time that we put into effect the zero tolerance for gender-based violence as part of the integrated approach towards the, our National Day of Health and Safety in Mining engagements and discussions. I do hope that we can hope we reflect on this and come back for the future with a better way of addressing this conversation all within one conversation. On behalf of the industry, I would like to thank our regulators and also colleagues from labor in assisting us to turn the safety ship that we continue to, to, to drive and, and, and pedal. It is heartening that notwithstanding the issues over which we sometimes find ourselves in conflict when it comes to safety and health, we do know that we work cooperatively because we are all aware of this common goal. My greatest wish is that when we meet again this time next year, we will have been able to say to each other that we have stepped up to the challenge together and that we finally turned the tide on fatalities as well as gender-based violence in the industry. As we move away from the blame culture and we adopt together the just culture, let us spend more time to understand what does this mean practically. Some examples have been given, including independent peer reviews of incidents, as well as strengthening the tripartite, which is a platform that we can use to further work together on these issues that have been raised this morning. So I really would like to thank everyone, especially the team from the Minerals Council led by Sitze and his colleagues in making sure that we have had these conversations for this morning. I wish you good health and strength in the next coming months. And thank you very much. Have a good day. Back to you, Roger. Madam President, Nalita, thanks very much indeed for those uh, wise words and again for your CEO ship uh, in this particular process. I'm not going to add anything else because I don't like to have the last say. It's the, it's the prerogative of the President to have the last say uh, in this discussion. The only thing that I will mention is that there are some Q&As that have been asked. Um, we'll pick up those Q&As and our health and safety team will revert on the specific questions that are relevant to the session this morning. 
so ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much to the chief inspector and the senior representatives from organized labor, the Minerals Council president and office bearers, the Minerals Council CEOs um, and entire Minerals Council team. And to, in particular, our special guests that are uh, with us here today as partners in this journey towards zero harm. Uh, I therefore close the meeting and wish you all a safe day and a safe week and a safe remainder of the rest of the year.